This is Taylor from Nuts Bolt Speed Training with how to create a waterfall chart in Microsoft PowerPoint using the new or newish waterfall chart type. By that, here in the insert chart dialog box in PowerPoint, we are looking at using this new or newish waterfall chart type, which works a little bit differently than all of these other normal chart types you're probably used to using. So there's a few adjustments that we're gonna need to make. For a data set, I'm gonna use the Microsoft 2001 sales by product category. So we wanna roll these up into a subtotal and then roll them up into the $168 billion of sales. This is what that chart looks like just to see if you actually wanna watch this video. So if you're wondering what is a waterfall chart, it's this kind of accumulation of product by product into some kind of subtotal or uh, total category. We'll then add up the rest of their numbers to get to the grand total of $160 billion. A couple things about this before we build it. Notice that we do have these subtotals and totals. This is what having a waterfall chart is for. Also notice the X axis down below. I've doubled and tripled up these category names so that we can use a larger font size down below. As far as the overall steps that we're gonna go through, we're gonna insert a waterfall chart type, that new or newish waterfall chart type. We need to input or copy and paste our data. We will need to use the select data dialog box to properly grab our data, which is different than other charts. Also different than other charts, we'll need to set and or clear our waterfall chart totals, which is the whole point or reason of having a waterfall chart to begin with. We'll need to sort out our X axis category lengths. I'll give you a couple of options for doing that. We need to format our chart, which we only have some limited options here. And then if we do wanna create a dynamic waterfall chart that updates as we update our data, we will need to add some sum functions to the underlying Excel spreadsheet. So here on a blank PowerPoint slide in my template, the first step is to come to the insert tab. We're gonna come and find the chart dialog box. Here inside the insert chart dialog box, the waterfall chart is just down below and we only have a single option. So we're gonna select it, click okay. We're immediately going to get a waterfall chart and just like any PowerPoint chart, it's gonna come preloaded with a bunch of dud data. So please don't leave this dud data in. The next step is just to copy and paste the data that we want. I have all of my Microsoft data here, Control C to copy. I'll click into Excel, Control V to paste. And notice all of that formatting comes in, which I don't want. So before I click away, I'm gonna click the control or paste options and select merge destination formatting, which is gonna wipe out all of that table formatting to match here to Excel. Now notice if you look at my chart, enterprise services here is the last data set that we have or the last data point we have in our chart. Notice also if I select my chart, we don't get the normal color coded rectangles that we normally get with our chart to drop series in and out. Notice if I close out of Excel, I'm gonna close out of the format chart dialog box area. I right click a normal chart and select edit data. All right, these are those colored rectangles I'm talking about where we drop series in and out of our chart. The waterfall chart type does not have this, so we need to select our data a different way. To select our data, we're gonna select our chart, come up to the chart design tab, select data. Now this dialog box can look a little bit intimidating at first. I'm just gonna resize my Excel spreadsheet. All we need to do in this select data data source dialog box is find the chart data range. We don't need to know anything about the numbers. We're gonna click the upward facing arrow. We're simply gonna click and drag to select our entire data series. We're gonna click the downward facing arrow and we're simply gonna click okay. I'm gonna close out of Excel and you can see shift F5. That's how far we've come. So we still have a lot of work to do. As a next step, I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna come back into PowerPoint. I'm gonna resize the chart so it's a little bit easier to see on my screen. Our next step is to set the subtotal and total for our waterfall chart. Now the way to do that for a waterfall chart is you select the series once, you select the data point a second time that you wanna set, you then right click it and select set as total and you'll see the SOW, the server office and windows subtotal is now formed. In the same way, if you wanna clear a subtotal in someone else's waterfall chart, you select the series once, select the single data point or total, right click it and select clear total. In this case, I do want this to be one total and I do want this total at the very end to be set as a total. So I'll right click and select set as total. So that is where we are so far with our waterfall chart. Now, a couple of executive decisions I wanna make about this waterfall chart is I wanna add data labels so I can see clearly what the numbers are so I don't have to use this uh, Y axis over here. I usually either use data labels or the Y axis. I never use both. Otherwise, it's kind of like wearing a belt and suspenders to keep your pants up. I'm also gonna clear out the grid lines. 
The next thing we'll do after that is we'll look at how long these category names are down below. This is something that we can double up using an Excel shortcut so we don't have to shrink down our font size. I'm gonna come back into PowerPoint. I'm gonna delete out my Y axis, select it, hit delete, select the grid lines, hit delete. I missed them. Try it again, delete, they disappear. I'm gonna right click the series, select add data labels. This is what I'm gonna roll forward with. Now, as far as our category links, this is a pretty not useful X axis categories because it, you have to make them really small. And this is where I see a lot of people make their waterfall charts. If I shift F5, they make the font size super small to fit everything on the X axis, but it just looks weird and you can't read it with the numbers. So instead what I recommend doing, I'm gonna hit escape, I do want my X axis font size to be a size 12. You can see it doesn't work right now, but if I right click, select edit data, I'm gonna come into the Excel spreadsheet behind my chart. I'm gonna click in, backspace, hold the alt key and hit enter. Alt plus enter in Excel is the way to force a second line. I'll hit enter again. You can see server products and CS, cloud services. Kind of triples up. I'm gonna do the same thing for office. Alt enter, backspace, alt enter, enter. Search and advertising, another revenue category, enter. And enterprise services, backspace, alt enter, enter. And you can see as I close out on my Excel spreadsheet, all of that information now fits. Now, before we start doing any formatting of our chart, we should first pick our style of chart. I'm gonna come and use these color options on the right. And the reason is if I shift F5, notice that the legend does come with an increase and decrease and a total category. We currently don't have a decrease yet. I'll show you that when we make our chart dynamic. If you do want this to automatically update, you're gonna to have to use one of the pre-formatted color options for your chart. So from this chart and specifically, I don't like all of these really bright theme colors that come with my template. I'm simply gonna choose one of these monochromatic colors and that's what I'm gonna work with. And the reason you need to set these colors first is if I first format a bunch of stuff in my chart, then later I come and choose a different color, right? The color options, I'm gonna lose all of my manual formatting. So I don't wanna do that. So after I have my monochromatic scale, I'm gonna add some format shape outlines, make it black. These totals and data series always start with big, thick black lines. So I'm gonna to come to the shape outline tool again, come to the weight, I'm gonna make them half point. I'm gonna do the same thing for my X axis here. I'm gonna make it a black color. And for my X axis, I almost always make them one and a half point weight. So it has more kind of solid foundation to sit on. I'm also gonna to come to the home tab. I'm gonna change this to black. I'm gonna change my data labels to black so that everything's a little bit easier to see. And I'm actually going to add back in my chart title, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. I'll click away, hit Shift F5, and that's how far we've come so far. The last thing I wanna do with this waterfall chart is make this subtotal and total dynamic such that as I change any of the underlying numbers, the total and subtotal automatically calculate. As I have this set up right now, these are just hard-coded numbers. So if this 23 billion becomes negative 23 billion, this chart is not gonna accurately reflect that subtotal. To do that, I'll come back into PowerPoint. First, I'll prove to you that it's not gonna work. I'm gonna select right-click, edit data. Here in the Excel spreadsheet, I'm gonna make this Windows just a negative 23 billion, hit enter. You're gonna see here in my chart that the negative 23 goes down, but I still have the 115 billion. In the same way, if I make search advertising negative for this waterfall chart, which it's not, if you're a Microsoft analyst, you can see right now this is not properly calculated. So this is the problem with hard-coded numbers. It's not accurately reflecting or updating as our data changes. To do that, all we need to do is come back into PowerPoint, right-click our chart, select edit data. I'm just gonna go forward with these negative numbers. All we need to do is come and find our subtotal. I recommend formatting it in a way or marking it with a formula. So remember what you did. This is now gonna become an equal sign, S-U-M for sum, open bracket. Holding shift, I'm just gonna come and grab all the numbers. I don't wanna grab the year up top. Please don't make that mistake. I'll hit enter. For the total down below, I'm gonna again control B to make it uh, some kind of different formatting. So I remember that this is actually a subtotal, equal sign, sum, open bracket. I'm gonna add up all of the numbers up, including the SOW total. I'll hit enter. 
put escape, shift F5. You can see now that this is accurately adding 52 billion, almost 40 billion. I'm subtracting 23 billion, now getting to 69 billion. This all then automatically calculates. Now I have their revenue at 140 billion, 104 billion, which is not correct, but I just wanted to show that this decrease will now automatically display as the decreases are added to my chart. And now this is a dynamic chart and that if I come and update any of these numbers, including the negative numbers, these subtotals will now automatically calculate. So that's how to create a waterfall chart in Microsoft PowerPoint. As a quick recap of the steps, you're gonna insert a waterfall chart using that new or newish chart type. You're gonna input or copy and paste your data into the Excel spreadsheet. You will need to use the select data dialog box as I showed you to correctly grab the correct series data for your chart. You're then going to need to set and or clear out the waterfall chart totals, which is the whole point of having a waterfall chart. This is kind of the sticky part if you're not used to doing this. You then need to sort out your X axis category lengths. I recommend the Alt plus Enter shortcut in Microsoft Excel. You'll then want to format your chart. You do have limited options. So you're gonna to wanna to pick the color of your chart first. And then to the extent that you wanna make your waterfall chart dynamic, such that as your data updates, so do your totals, you'll need to go and add those sum functions in the underlying Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. If you're new to the channel and wanna keep up to date on my latest PowerPoint hacks, tips, and tricks, what I call PowerPoint hack trickery, make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're just looking for some PowerPoint resources to help get you to happy hour, including PDF cheat sheets and free courses, look for the links directly below in the description box. This is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and I'll see you at happy hour.